Why ride the Dalton? Before doing it myself, all I'd heard is that it's overrated, only the first half of the 414 mile ride is even scenic, and bad road conditions can make the trip a grueling mess. On top of that, the road's desolate, except for truckers who aren't exactly excited to be sharing the road with yet another idiot on a bike. Sign me up. I went in this ride relatively unprepared and very much underdressed. Like playing a video game on a hard mode. To up the ante even more, the motor rental place suggested four days for the ride. I insisted I could do it in three. So here we are at the very beginning of things, paying over $1,000 for a rental to spend the next three days being pretty miserable. It was time to prove if I wasn't going to be smart about this, I was at least going to have to be tough. When you're doing something as serious as the Dalton, you want specialty equipment. For example, snowboarding pants. Nobody's going to be impressed by a lift ticket from last year. This is actually the start of the road. And in the past hour since I first checked in, I've learned one very important lesson. This helmet is gonna be really uncomfortable. Like, check this out. This isn't gonna be as easy as I thought. I didn't know there was gonna be a pretty sign just on the way. I thought that was the only sign. Before we get properly started and into this thing, I thought I should grab a few seconds here. First thing, prep for this. Really decided last night that I was gonna do this today. I imagine there's a lot of people out there who prepare for this for weeks and have a great like list of everything they wanna pack, everything they wanna do. This was as simple as getting the motorcycle and just throwing stuff into the boxes on it and whatever didn't fit in there, strap it on top. So I don't have an awesome meal plan. I do have an entire bin right there full of a lot of candy bars and nuts. I lucked out that they had a jacket that I could use for this drive. That is awesome. This is my first time on a BMW bike. I've been really excited to try riding a GS for a really long time. It's got 22,000 miles on it, and I'm sure most of those are Dalton. It's been running really good, and I think it'll be pretty comfortable. <laughs> I don't know what would be really comfortable for this long of an upcoming drive, though. The plan for today. I have to drive up to the Yukon River. There is a little spot there called the Yukon River Crossing, and I'm getting gas there. Uh, I'm getting gas because then the next spot to get gas is at Coldfoot. I hope to have a nice little dinner up at Coldfoot and get gas there, and then I am going to head north to the south side of the pass near the Brooks Mountains. I, I should really know all this stuff by heart. I don't. I did buy some bear spray before I left today. I don't know if that's going to do anything if I really need it, but it, I guess it makes me feel better. I'm all high spirits now and could not be more excited to be doing this. I have an awesome wife. She was nothing but supportive of this whole thing. She didn't understand it, but she's like, I get it, want to do it, go. This is Yukon Crossing here and the first stop for gas. The owners of the rental company said that I'd have to be careful with the throttle, not be a throttle jockey, go easy on it, because I was going to be needing every bit of gas to get between, well, Yukon up to Coldfoot and then Coldfoot to Dead Horse. And actually, if I haven't mentioned already, 
I do have two extra gallons of gas and I'll need those to get from cold foot up to dead horse. I don't know what the hell happened immediately after leaving the Yukon River stop there. The road went from something I was going like 65 on the gravel to just this muddy, slippery. I'm having a problem in first gear going 10 on the, it's just, I. <laughs> well, Finny. I made it to that stupid sign I wanted to go to and you were really smart for not wanting to do this. All of a sudden, since hitting like right near the Arctic Circle, the mosquitoes are coming out now. A quick time out for useful information too. If you want to drive up here, definitely get a rental car that is supposed to be on the road. We've seen YouTube videos where people drive their RVs up here. Unless you have like a truck camper, I won't drive an RV up here. The road is great and then all of a sudden just it's like the end of the world and it's just the greatness stops and then it's just super rough. The potholes are epic. They give Chicago a run for their money, but it wouldn't be a problem to get up here at all in a truck or small SUV. I would bring extra an extra tire though. <laughs> this is beautiful cold foot behind me. This field, my home for tonight. And somehow it ended up being freezing, so there's no bugs, but I'm gonna have to deal with uh, sleeping in the tent. I did not pack wisely for this trip either. Hello and welcome to a very special segment of a show I like to call Let's Try Not to Freeze. And my buddy uh, Jim right here. Here's my woefully inadequate <laughs> uh, sleeping bag. By the way, please notice you can still see me okay. Obviously it was a little better with the lighting before, but it is 10 to midnight. Still this bright outside. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get back to hanging out with Jim. I'll see you tomorrow morning. I survived. I did it. The biggest problem here was the noise from the trucks rolling in and out of here all the time. Uh, it was also really cold. <laughs> but <laughs> I took uh, hand warmers and stuck them in my sock. And it was, it was cold. Time to get up and see what else Coldfoot has to offer me. Quick shout out, of course it was Finney's idea to pack these. I didn't think I'd need them. She just knows. Here's something that's tough about doing any of this. It's really hard to just stay in the moment all the time, knowing that I have to film all this stuff. I'm nice and warm for breakfast. I had a bunch of coffee. I know it's time to drone, but that means literally finding a place to pull over, uh, dealing with this luggage bag that's not that easy to open to begin with, taking the drone out, setting it all up, and even doing something like pulling out the camera. Who knows if the helmet is like muffling my voice or if the audio is bad or anything. Every time you're just like driving for more than 10 minutes, all I can think about is like, should I set up for another shot? Should I get this? Did I get this? Do I need to do it again? Could it be better? Uh, kind of takes you out of the moment a little bit, but I know I'm not going to want to do this on the drive back if I make it to Dead Horse, so now's the time. Uh, 
I lost my I lost the sleeping bag and the tent off the back of the scooter <laughs> scooter motorcycle. Um, I feel like an idiot right now. I still have my straps and everything so I can get back going here, but God, that just sucks. I drove pretty far back, like 15 minutes with another rider who was going by. I didn't see anything. I don't know what to do. They're just unreal. I feel like a spaceman right now that discovered the worst kind of alien. I can hear him hitting my helmet like raindrops on a roof. Plus I know for a fact that it's 46 degrees based on the thermometer. How are these bugs still up here? It's, it's so cold right now. It's got... <sighs> By far the MVP of this trip, the hand warmers on this thing. I don't think this would be possible today without the hand warmers. They are that good and that important to just the morale of this expedition. The other thing is I just put the fuel cell into the motorcycle like this is it. I. Whatever way I go now, I have to like stick with it. I can't think about it again. Um, we're going to Dead Horse. This is it. I'm here. This is Dead Horse. I was too cold to even like record coming in from outside or just the Dead Horse camp sign outside. Like that last 45 minutes, I was just kind of in a trance, like trying to maintain focus, trying to stay safe. The roads were terrible and I am just chilled to the core. Um, <laughs> I'm almost out of jokes now. <laughs> Just, that last bit was brutal. Um, just gonna warm up now and then I'll give you a tour of a $219 hotel room. Dead Horse Camp goes with a 1970s dorm room uh, decor style. I will be getting a roommate, possibly. I have my own light above my bed. There's places to uh, hang clothes. That's it. That's the hotel room. <laughs> the bathrooms are down the hall. Plenty of hot water. Well, well worth the $219 though. I went from thinking that was a joke to just ecstatic to uh, pay and get a room and be warm and just like, I can't believe what a beating I took on the road the past couple of days. Um, well, I still have any, any energy at all. Let's look real quick. This is the food Finn helped me pack for the, <laughs> that's still left over and I'm driving home tomorrow. <laughs> bars, bars, bars. Bunch of tuna and chickens. Ice, ice cream. God, I can't even talk right. Hey, there's our buddy Jim from the last night. A ceremonial Bud Light Lime for tomorrow to drink for my buddies. Um a pound and a half of heavily salted cured meat, 17 pounds of walnuts to eat, more nuts, some, <laughs> pretty much the only vegetable or fruit you can take with you that's not gonna fall apart on the bike. Besides that, for the last night here, it's make sure that everything is down by the radiator, drying for tomorrow so I'm not miserable, and then just charging a bunch of electronics. There's no keys for the doors here. It's on the honor system. When you 
close the door, that means nobody can come in. <laughs> well, you can lock it from the inside, but you don't have a key to your room. I'm like slap happy. I need to go to bed. I'm dying here. I just want to do this because I can't do it in the morning. But speaking of the morning, Getting some petrol this morning. Once you're swiped in here, well, aside from the fuel station here and those buildings, that's Dead Horse. It isn't Disneyland up here. Mickey wasn't here to greet me when I showed up and nobody's gonna be waving when I say goodbye. Um, I was gonna wait and record a voiceover later, but I mean, this is the feelings on this whole thing. I'm so glad I did this. I don't ever need to do this again. Glad I didn't turn back and go back to Coldfoot. It's just nice to have this checked off the list and uh, the Dalton, it wasn't, there weren't like explosions, there weren't scorpions jumping at me or bears trying to maul me. It's a hard road to drive, depending on conditions. Um, it's a test of endurance and this is really cheesy, but it's like one of those last wild hard things out there to really test yourself against. I know there's harder routes, longer routes, but I mean, this is something I'm not gonna forget doing <laughs> but it's something I just will never need to go do again. I have likely a 14 hour drive home today. The last two days have taken me a lot longer to get here because I've been recording so I won't be recording on the way home unless something epic happens. But uh, it's time to hit the road. That's all I can say. Let's get at it. Here we are, hounds. This is Dead Horse. This is the end of the line. I have one last special treat for you guys today. This might be the only Bud Light Lime within 500 miles of here. This is all for you guys. Seven a.m. beer. <laughs> this is as north of the wall as it gets in the U.S. Winter is coming. It's going to be a lot of powder out there. <laughs> 